Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart. Welcome to another edition of Your Bible Questions Answered. Today is Sunday. It's the 21st day of April 2024. And today what we're going to do is look at a question that has to do with the subject of Christian living, how to live the Christian life. Because you often hear me say we talk about what we believe as Christians, why we believe, but let's not forget the third thing, how to live it. And there's a very important question that you and I need to understand from Scripture with respect to how to live the Christian life, and that is simply this. Whom is the believer supposed to love? Now, this comes from our book, Winning the Spiritual War, question 13, under the heading of Christian living. And it's very important that we all remember this. All right. Once a person becomes a Christian, their life should be characterized by love. Love can be defined as a desire and a delight for the highest good for others. In other words, it's the desire for their best welfare. All right, we're also told love is the test of knowing God. The Bible says that love is the supreme and decisive test of believers. Those who truly know him will show it by their love. John writes in 1 John 4, 7 and 8, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Those who know the God of the Bible will share his love and show his love to others. Now, it also tells us something that a person has actually passed from death unto life. John wrote this in 1 John 3, 14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death, 1 John 3, 14. And that's talking about obviously, obviously spiritual death to spiritual life. We're new people in Christ Jesus, and we have new goals, new thoughts, new behaviors, and one of them is loving people. And so the love that we have, the love that we never had before, the supernatural love shows that we pass from spiritual death to spiritual life. All right, that being the case, uh, how should this love be directed? Well, there's several directions we're told which we should uh, show our love. First and foremost, we're to love God, and this is number one. Above all, our love should be directed to God. In fact, in the Old Testament was made clear. In the law of Moses, we read, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Now, when Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment, he too emphasized that God should be loved above all. Matthew records the following question to Jesus as well as his answer. Teacher, which commandment is the greatest in Moses' teaching? Jesus answered him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, Matthew 22, 36 to 37. All right, so how do we show God's love? How do we truly show that we do love God? Simple, we keep his commandments. Jesus made this abundantly clear. If you love me, you will obey my commandments, John 14, 15. So those of us who love the Lord will indeed obey his commandments. That's point number one. Point number two, and this is also very important, you and I are to love fellow believers. While Christians are to love everyone, they should have a special love towards the people of God. Indeed, first and foremost, the Christian will be characterized by the love which they show to fellow believers. Jesus said, as recorded in John 13, 34, and 35, I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other in the same way that I've loved you. Everyone will know that you are my disciples because you love, because of your love for each other. John 13, 34, and 35. All right, so the mark of the Christian is the love that they show to other believers. This is the badge which all believers should wear. Peter emphasized the same thing when he wrote, show respect for everyone. Love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God. Show respect for the king. 1 Peter 2, 17. Again, we find the emphasis on loving fellow believers. Paul also wrote of the need for Christians to love one another. He wrote the following to the Thessalonians. And may the Lord increase, make, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you. 1 Thessalonians 3.12. In other words, Paul basically saying is the love you see that I have for you, may you show it to fellow believers. So what we have in the New Testament is the repetition of this point. Believers must love other believers. In another place, the Apostle Paul again emphasized the special love we are to have for fellow believers. Galatians 6.10. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, 
especially to our Christian brothers and sisters, Galatians 6.10. Paul personally expressed that type of love to the Corinthians when he wrote, May love be with you all in Christ Jesus, 1 Corinthians 16.24, to love every believer. All right, one of the ways which we can show our love to believers is help the ones who are in need, and this is a very practical way of doing it. Paul wrote, when God's children are in need, be the one to help them out and get into the habit of inviting guests home for dinner or if they need lodging for the night, Romans 12, 13. Consequently, Christians are to show their love to fellow believers in a number of very practical ways. Number three, husbands are to love their wives and wives are to love their husbands. Now, there's another type of love here which believers are to express, husbands to love their wives and wives to love their husbands. Paul told the husbands this in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Ephesians 5.25. All right, men, we're to love our wives, love our spouses. Paul also emphasized the love we're to have for our children. He wrote this to Titus. These older women must tra train the younger women, what? To love their husbands and their children. Titus 2.4. Our children need to be the recipients of our love. And it's usually very easy to love your children, at least when they're babies. Uh, when they get older, sometimes it's really difficult. But again, let's remember we're to love our children just as God loves us. Now, the husband also has the responsibility to take care of their relatives. Paul wrote to Timothy, uh, people who don't care for their relatives and especially their families have given up their faith. They are worse than someone who doesn't have faith in the Lord. 1 Timothy 5.8. So husbands are to love their wives and their family. This is the, what the Lord expects. And this verse, 1 Timothy 5, 8, is one I often quote. It talks about the responsibility of a husband. You're to take care of your family, your, your wife, your, your children. If you don't, you're worse than an unbeliever, worse than an infidel. We're to love them, take care of them, and do the best we can to do this. Now, none of us, obviously, are going to be perfect, but our hearts, our desire should be doing this. So men, step up to the plate and do that job. And again, like I said, with children, uh, children usually are easy to love when they're babies, but when they get older, sometimes it's very, very difficult because of, you know, the, the way they go. But no matter what, you love them. You love them for the sake of Jesus Christ, even if they're uh, backslidden, even if they go anti-Christian, because you have that responsibility, because you never know what's going to happen, how they might come back to Jesus Christ. So please don't ever stop loving your kids. All right, number four, we are to love the unbelievers. Let's not forget that. The believer also needs to show love for the unsaved. In other words, love tomorrow's Christians today. Love those who don't know Christ. The Bible says that God showed his love to the world by sending Jesus. John 3, 16, the most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You and I are to love the lost and have that burden for them so they will come to know Jesus Christ. Hopefully that's on all of our hearts to see people come to faith in Christ. Now, this one here is one especially meaningful to me where Paul spoke of his motivation for ministry. It was the love of Christ. For the love of Christ controls us, or some translation says constrains us, since we have concluded this, that Christ died for all. Therefore, all have died. Christ has died for each and every person. Our goal, our desire should be to reach these people, reach them for the sake of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we do here in this ministry. The love of Christ is what constrains us, controls us to get out the gospel, get out the word of God to people so they will know the same wonderful Christ that we do. Now, uh, when it says the love of Christ controls us, this is interesting. It can mean one of two things, either our love for Christ or his love for us. Actually, both are true. We love him, and he first loved us, of course. But as far as unbelievers are concerned, God does not only provide enough love to fill our hearts and lives, he teaches us to love those who normally we would not bother with, and that is the unbelievers. This concerns those who don't know Christ, so please don't give up on them. Pray for them. Love them for the sake of Jesus Christ. Which brings us to a similar point number five, where to love our neighbor. We are commanded to love our neighbor. When Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment, we find the following response in Matthew 22, 36 to 39. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. 
Matthew 22, 36 to 39. Now, this is another way of saying love one another. This would include both believers and unbelievers when you love your neighbor. We are to love humanity because humans and only humans have been made in the image of God. And finally, number six, we are to love our enemies, something that's impossible to do without the love of Christ. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gave these famous words, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5, 44. This type of love can only come from God. You and I do not have the capacity in and of ourselves to love those who hate us. So this sums up what the scripture has to say about whom we are supposed to love. It is clear from the Bible that we are to love others. And so as we study the scripture, let us always remember above all, we're to show the love of Christ, Christian character. There's a story I heard that really broke my heart. Uh, many years ago, it was about a certain conference, a Protestant denomination, Protestant Christian denomination, had a huge conference in a big city, and they sent a reporter there, to uh, a Christian reporter, to re basically to recall what was said and to you know share with it and summarize what he saw. And it uh, broke my heart when he said um, what he uh, perceived. He said that these pastors, and it's a pastoral conference, were as orthodox as Peter and Paul, but they were as mean as the devil. Now that's tragic. We're to be loving, we're to know what we believe, to know why we believe, and to understand, and, and not we won't agree with everybody on certain biblical doctrines. We know that. We do our best, but we'll have certain disagreements, but we're all one in Christ. But in doing so, we want to show Christian character. We're to love one another. We're not to be mean to someone because they believe something different than us. This is very, very important. And so as we deal with these subjects, and we've dealt with a lot of them, especially with the last day's Bible prophecy, there'll be differences of opinion. And that's okay. That's fair. Bible believers can have differences of views on certain subjects, but we want to do it in love. We want to, as one of my teachers said, disagree agreeably and disagree without being disagreeable. And that's the key at the end of the day. All right. Well, again, we shifted gears a little bit doing this, but I think we have to remind ourselves that when we're doing our study, above all, we need to love God, love believers, and love the unbelievers. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, may the Lord, as always, richly, richly bless.